and made it grow. How many of you were here for breakfast this morning? How many of you need to go outside and walk around the church and come back in? Okay, so you'll have time to do that during fellowship time. If you want to go outside, walk all the way around the church, make one lap and come back in, you can do that. I'm going to uh, open us up in prayer and then we'll, we'll stand in fellowship. Let's stand together right now. Father, we thank you for this wonderful Sabbath day you've given us, Lord. Thank you for another opportunity to come to your house, Lord, and uh, worship you, Lord. In spirit and truth, we pray for those that couldn't be here, those that are in their hospital uh, beds today, Lord. We pray special prayers for them and, and uh, for those at home that couldn't make it, God. Just be with them, touch them. Uh, give us a great day today, Lord, and just uh, visit your presence here this morning. We pray, God, that uh, you would just rule this hour. In Christ's name, amen. So be here uh, 6 o'clock Wednesday night. Make sure you bring somebody with you. Tell, tell your family and friends about that. Bring them. We're gonna have, we've invited a couple of churches to come here and just have their, their service here with us on Wednesday night. So hopefully we'll pack this place out for the Daraja African Children's Choir. <laughs>
chapter 4, verses 14 through 23. This is the end of the, the letter that Paul wrote to the Philippians. Philippians chapter 4. It was interesting to watch the, over there when we were eating breakfast this morning at 10 o'clock. All the adults went for the gravy and biscuits. The gravy was gone, by the way, Wolf. That was a great job on the gravy and biscuits and eggs and bacon and all that. All the kids passed all that by and went straight to the donuts and all the sugar things. 
So Brooke gets to take care of them for this, and I get to keep y'all awake for this. Uh, Philippians 4, chapter, chapter number 4, verses 14 through 23 says this, Yet it was good of you to share in my troubles. Moreover, as you Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out from Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving, except you only. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid more than once when I was in need. Not that I desire your gifts. What I desire is that more be credited to your account. I have received full payment and have more than enough. I am am amply supplied. Now that I have received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent, they are a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice pleasing to God. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of His glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Greet all God's people in Christ Jesus. The brothers and sisters who are with me send greetings. All God's people here send you greetings. Especially those who belong to Caesar's household. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. I want to speak to you this morning on this subject. The Giving Church. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the songs that we've sung this morning, Lord, and the spirit that we felt. I pray, God, that you would just go before us now this morning and and you be seen. Move me to the background and you move to the forefront, God, as as you speak through this the end of this letter that Paul wrote to the to the little Philippian church, Lord, and how it can even speak to us today in 2016 at Metagrove. Lord, we're thankful for all those in attendance. Lord, we're thankful for all the kind words that have been said to me and to my family this morning. Thankful for a church family so loving and so caring. God, just be with us in this service and get glory in Christ's name. Amen. You can be seated. I do want to say thank you all for, for everything that you've done for Sherry and Riley and Noah and I and since we've been here and especially all the kind words, the cards and Got some, got, got some gifts this morning. I've got a tie clip on that Don gave me. It says Jesus on it right here. And I don't have a gold tie clip with Jesus on it. So thank you, Don. Appreciate that. And appreciate the, the things that y'all have done for us and continue to do. I want to talk to you about the giving church. The giving church. No one knows, no one cares how much you know until they know how much you care. The Philippian church cared about Paul. They cared about him. Paul considered this gift that the Philippian church had given him as an investment, as an investment to the ministry of spreading the gospel where he was in Rome. We, we can't forget, we've studied this whole book of Philippians. We can't forget that Paul is in prison here. He's in chains, but the gospel is not. The gospel is not in chains. This little church that met Paul's uh, material needs. They, they met his needs in a way that right at that very moment he needed, but God, only God could meet his spiritual needs. It's for the Lord to keep a record of what we give and what we offer to him. It's for the Lord to keep books on the sacrifice and the generosity of his people. And do you know that the Lord never fails to pay one spiritual dividend? He never fails to bless His people when they have given. How sad it is when churches become, and I've been at some, they just become savings banks. They just want to save them. They want to take all the money in and they want to sit on it. I guess in case the hurricane gets to Hayesville and blows the roof off the church, they'll have enough money to put a roof on the church. But they want to take the money in and they they don't want to give it away to anybody. They don't want to help other people, they want to say, well, we've got, you know, we've got $100,000 in our banking account. And we, you know, we're doing really good down there. That's not the case of this little Philippian church. They were sending out missionaries. And even though their founder, this pastor, this preacher, Paul, was in jail, he was still able to spread the gospel through the giving of this little church. You know, that's not the case at Metagrove either. It's not the case here. Several months ago in a deacon's meeting, Chad McClure, our chairman of the deacons, he, de- he decided and he made a statement. He said, you know, the Lord's laid this on my heart. I may have told you something about this. The Lord's laid it on my heart that we give 
10% of everything we take in to our offering, we give it away. We give it away to another ministry. We give it away to another church that's struggling. Whatever it is. Because he said, not long ago, we were in a financial valley. And we were having a hard time paying our bills. And he said, you know, I was so glad that people stuck it through and they were still coming to church and that we made it through. But he said, I want, it's been laid on my heart by the Holy Spirit that we give away 10% of everything that we take in. We talked about this in the deacons meeting and we agreed that it was a good idea. Do you know something? Every idea that God gives you is a good idea. Every idea that God gives you is a good idea. So, so we said, okay, let's call that our missions and, and outreach. Just last, last month, we ear, ear, earmarked that as our missions and outreach money. We have since given donations to churches for several different causes and, and different places. God has always blessed our church for doing so. We give away some money and God blesses us. We give away something to somebody and God blesses us. The latest thing we've done recently, we gave $1,000 to a little group called the Shack campus ministry at the University of South Carolina. The pastor was so grateful. That, that guy that came and brought his, his youth group here that Sunday and they sang worship songs for us and they were so grateful and so surprised that we would give them this check and he had tears in his eyes and he's got two little bitty kids and I said, you know, I don't know what you need this for, but you know what you need. You might need it for your family, you might need it for your ministry, you might need it for something on campus, but God knows what, what you need this for. We gave him a thousand dollars. They didn't even know us. We didn't know them, but we met them at, at Riley's birthday party at Fires Creek and they were having a baptism and I said, y'all come to church and sing for us tomorrow. And then we gave them that gift as they went home. And they, they've texted me and kept in touch. And they're coming back in the spring. And, and they're excited about that. But let me tell you just a brief update of something we just done this past week. This past Thursday, on the coast of North Carolina, while we were all at home or at, or at work, and we were driving back and forth, everything was going on just like a daily, our daily routine, there were 43 shelters on the coast housing 3,400 people. 1,000 National Guard members were activated by our governor and about 200 of them were assigned to Robinson County. Now the water was receding in some of the cities and the lights were slowly coming back on on Thursday. 56,000 still, still are without power. That's down from 900,000 the week before. The utility companies are working around the clock to get people their power back on. The governor said sadly the poorest of the poor in North Carolina are the ones who are being hurt the most by these floods. Some of these people have nothing left. They are sitting in high school gyms with their whole family. Now I didn't know all this when I got an email from, from Teresa Waldrup on Thursday morning. A message from Assistant Superintendent of Robinson County Schools. And she was heading back out to the coast on Friday. And I talked with Gary Fullman, I talked with Kim Rupar, and decided how Meta Grove could best help her immediate needs. She asked for blankets, school supplies, and gas cards. Anything that we would donate would be appreciated and given out to the people in need. I called her on the phone. And I said, Lisa, we had a great conversation. I said, Lisa, I wanted to try to encourage her. What is your most immediate needs? And she said, some people in these gyms, they don't even have a blanket. They don't have a blanket to lay down at night. So I told her that our church wanted to help her out. Teresa collected school supplies and there was a lady going, leaving Paysville, going over to Franklin to give her all this stuff. And I don't know the people in Robinson County. I don't know how many blankets were needed in the gym where the families were sleeping. But God knows those people. And they're His children. And they're our brothers and sisters. And this church gave them a check for $2,000. I think we should give God the glory for that. Listen, your offerings and your tithes are not only helping to keep Meta Grove going, they're helping all across the nation. 
You don't even realize when you put your check in that offering plate how it's helping people, how it's making a difference. And do you know, what if one day in heaven somebody walks up to you and says, thank you for the blanket? Or what if some child comes up and says, thank you for the box of crayons? You know, we, we had a hard, hard week, you know, during that hurricane. And I just want to thank you. Thank you for that jug of water that your, your church provided when we were in need. Paul wrote 2 Corinthians 2. He said this in, in chapter 9, verse 7. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. I hope that we're giving and continue to give to our church out of the passion we have in our heart to continue to move the gospel forward, as we have the past couple of years. When I give my gift, if given in the right attitude, do you know that it will keep on giving for a long, long, long time? You have been a blessed. You have been blessed so you can be a blessing. Our church has been blessed so we can bless others. There's an interesting contrast between uh, verses 18 and 19 in this last chapter. It says, I have received full payment and have more than enough. I am amply supplied now that I have received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent. They're a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, and pleasing to God. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of glory in Christ Jesus. Paul says, you met my need, now God is going to meet your need. You gave all you had to me, now God's going to give you everything you need. You gave to me out of the poverty... God's going to repay you out of His glorious riches that He has. God has promised, folks, to meet all our needs. To meet all our, not all our greeds, but all our needs. He's promised that. Hudson Taylor said this, When God's work is done in God's way for God's glory, it will not lack for God's supply. Let me read that to you again. When God's work is done... In God's way, for God's glory, it will not lack for God's supply. This is not a name it and claim it philosophy. This is a promise from God. It's a spiritual leadership promise. There's a spiritual significance when you give something and you respond toward the Holy Spirit telling you what to give, allowing you to give. I hope you don't give because you're obligated. I hope you feel blessed and you want to give. Verse 21 says, Greet all people, God's people in Christ Jesus. The brothers and sisters who are with me send greetings. Does this mean that that Paul had all these these people in prison, had they all been saved? Probably. He was doing his own little prison ministry there. The brothers and sisters, he says, with me send greetings. Paul speaking to everybody in the church Now, let everyone in the church today hear this. Whether your gift is small or large, whether you have plenty or you just have enough to get by with, when you give a tithe or an offering to God, you are going to be blessed. That's a promise. We can't outgive God. A tithe, what's the difference in a tithe and an offering? A tithe is 10% of our income, what we've decided to set aside for God's house, for, for this place. That's our tithe. The Bible says that it's correct, it's right to bring your tithe, your first 10%, into the storehouse first. Then your offering. What's an offering? That's anything above and beyond your tithe that you want to give to the local church or you want to sacrificially give to another, to another person that's in need. Something which the Holy Spirit has led you to do. At the end of Philippians, we see that, that Paul has a great sense of humor. And I didn't, I didn't realize this. But when I studied this out, he says this statement. He ends this joyful little letter with a, a little ironic statement. Listen to this. He said, all God's people here send you greetings, especially those who belong to Caesar's household. 
Now, do you know what he's saying here? These are the prison guards. These are the people who arrested Paul and put him into prison. Anybody working for the Roman government was said to be of Caesar's household. And what Paul's saying, this is, this is what I thought was funny. Paul's saying, the ones that arrested me, the ones that are trying to silence me, the men that work for Caesar, they said to tell y'all hello. And he says, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. Bill and, and Gloria Gaither, you know all those Gaither homecoming videos. They, they've written many, many songs. And one of the songs that, that they wrote was, Give It Away. The story behind that song was Bill Gaither's grandfather used to say, there are basically two kinds of people in this world. They're givers and there's takers. So decide which one you want to be. The longer I live, he said, the more I'm convinced that they're right. His parents were right. They're big-hearted, generous people and there are clutchy, stingy people. We also have observed that the attitude with which a person approaches life doesn't seem to have much to do with how much they have. We've seen unselfish, generous, poor people. And we've seen tight-fisted, grasping, rich people. We've seen some extravagantly liberal givers who had means, and we've seen some miserable, greedy, poor people. It all depends on how we choose to spend the days allotted to us. Luke 12, Luke 12 Skip John 12 and go to Luke 12. 20, 33 says this, Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses yourselves that will not... Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out. A treasure in heaven that will never fail, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. What does that mean? Let me tell you what Eugene Peterson says in the message. This is how the message reads. Guess what? We can't outgive God. Get this. Be generous. Give to the poor. Get yourself a bank account that can't go bankrupt. A bank in heaven, far from bank robbers, safe from embezzlers, a bank you can bank on. Isn't it obvious? The place where your treasure is, is the place where you will most want to be and where you will end up being. The song says, He was working in his garden when I happened by. He waved me over with that look in his eye and started breaking off some ears of corn. Here, boy, today this corn is just right. Just boil it up for your supper tonight. I've learned it's true what my pappy used to say. Nothing's quite as good till you give it away. There are two kinds of folks, takers and givers. There are gripers and complainers and big-hearted livers. It depends on how we choose to spend our days we can hoard up all we have, or we can give it all away. It says, if you want more happy than your heart can hold, if you want to stand taller if the truth were told, take whatever you have and give it away. If you want less lonely and a lot more fun, and deep satisfaction when the day is done, throw your heart wide open and give it away. Isn't that good? I love, I love that song, I love that story. I love this passage that we read today about how we can be generous and how much God loves a generous, cheerful, cheerful giver. I pray that we remain the church that will share what we have with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Let's pray. Father God, thank you Lord for Paul and him writing this letter. Thank you Lord that it still speaks to us today. Uh, at Metagrove in 2016 how relevant your word is for us and how we can Lord help others in need help those that are less fortunate and God we just pray that we would continue as a church to be blessed for every effort that we put forth in in furthering your ministry for every effort that we put forth Lord in in loving our brothers and sisters all across this this county and this country and the world Lord I pray for the missionaries today Lord that that stand in the face of, uh, of mart martyrdom. Lord, I pray, God, that you would just 
be with them as they proclaim your word and as we send money to, to different areas, God, that you would just bless it and you would multiply it and, God, you would get glory for all that your people are doing in the world today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. to the midst of the sea.